All right, guys, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to this painting tutorial video. So today my smoking hot wife is gonna be painting this glorious miniature that you see before you in all of its majesty and glory. So recently one of our community members here, Sir Nicholas reached out and he custom designed this model and sent us the 3D print. It is gonna be leading my empire army for generations to come. We got the mullet, we got the glasses, we got the Sigmarite hammer. It is just, it's just a masterpiece. I can't tell you like how happy I was when I got this. So again, Sir Nicholas, thank you so much. And he is a uh, 3D mini designer. So if you guys want to check him out, you can head on over to either his Instagram page, which you can see on uh, the video right now, Sir Nicholas STA. All sorts of minis here. Very, very cool stuff. You could probably fit them into all sorts of your fantasy armies. And he's also going to be on Patreon as well. So you guys can check him out and see what he's offering over there. So once again, Sir Nicholas, thank you so much. And if the mini does look pretty familiar to you, that's because it's been inspired by the mini that you guys have been seeing as our screen blocker, where, you know, you got Wookiee there with the hammer and the little paws raising up and down. So the original kind of art piece was done by Samael Phoenix. So again, thank you so much, Samael, for the inspiration on this. And uh, once again, thank you guys so much. And now it's showtime. Hey guys, it's the supposedly smoking hot wife here and I'm going to show you what I did with this spectacular mini that Sir Nicholas was kind enough to provide us with. First, I primed him with black and now I'm gonna go with Wraithbone and give him a rather aggressive dry brush. Now, the dry brush isn't going to show underneath the layers of paint but it's okay because it let me see where the highlights are most needed and brought out the details really nicely. Of course, I could have primed him with Wraith Stone and then create the shadows with Null Oil, but frankly, I prefer it this way. And if I used contrast paints, the highlights would have been actually visible. Now, I might or might not have broken off a piece of reins, so I need to save the situation and using a waxed cord, I'm going to try and create a piece of reins. Painting the cord with black gesso, it made it a, a little more stiff. And now using a total Dremel knockoff of a rotary tool, I'm going to create sort of an indentation in Turin's hand to adhere the little piece of cord there so that that hand doesn't hover over there awkwardly. I'm obviously going to deal with those ugly frayed edges of the cord, but as a matter of fact I remember to do it by the very end of the process. Now. Following up with Abaddon Black and Palette Witch Flesh, I mixed the two to achieve this charcoal kind of hue. Not quite black, not quite grey, but exactly how Wookiee's fur was in real life. This is a demigriff that Turin painted himself and I'm keeping the little guy here just to make sure that I'm following the paint scheme really accurately. And that's why Mephisto in Red is going straight on Wookiee's chest plate in two thicker coats. For some reason I find that Mephisto uh, is really see-through, even though it's a base paint, but go figure. And same treatment for the cape. Now I'm gonna use Bane Blade Brown to try and recreate Turin's natural hair color. I think I failed miserably because he has this dark blonde kind of golden hue. Unless I tried. Scrag Brown for a change is going to be for the saddle, for the straps and for the reins, all that good stuff. Now after the fact I realized the saddle probably should have been gold, like Carl Franz style. But it's fine, 
we can just pretend that Turin is a cowboy and has a western style saddle over there. Back with Pallid Witch Flesh, I love the color, hate the consistency, but it's the best shade to create realistically looking cloth with. Scar White or any sort of uh, pure white looks a little too unnatural, like a little too hospital style. So instead Pallid Witch Flesh is gonna make for nice cloth and nice fur trim. Switching to metallics, good old lead belcher going all over the armor. Now the knees and elbows are gonna be actually gold, but I changed my mind later. So I'm slapping a one thick layer of silver simply because I hate dealing with metallics and it looks good, so we're fine. Retributor armor is going to go over all the gold elements. Look at those ornaments. The level of detail on this mini is truly incredible. And our very own little gal morass and the lion shaped shoulder pad. I'm not sure you guys can see right now, but trust me, it is a lion mole. And again, back with palette wedge flesh. And I'm gonna go over the ribbon and this crest here. I probably could have made it gold or something, but I'm actually gonna use uh, the ribbon and the crest to write something. So I needed a background that pops out. Kisla flesh is gonna become Turin flesh. And since my hands shake severely, uh, this kind of detailed work isn't my strongest side. No disasters so far, at least not too big ones. Painting those swaggy sunglasses. And I didn't film grabbing the paint, but this is um, the uh, Karoberg Crimson Wash. Fantastic to give depth to any sort of gold elements and obviously go over the skin. which is my arch nemesis, shit always spills, always hits the fan. So I'm acting like that puddle back there was intended, but it wasn't. Nevertheless, I'm going over the entire model and giving it a solid, solid amount of gnome. Moving on to the highlights, Evil Sun Scarlet is going to become um, the shade to highlight the red with. And when it comes to highlights, I like to think of them as either wet or dry. I'm sure there is some sort of a professional term for that, I'm not sure. But to give something texture, like you're gonna see in a moment, right here, I'm going to sort of dry brush that highlight to try and create the texture over the chest piece. Ronfang Steel to highlight all the lead vulcher. And this, for a change, I mixed with a little bit more water so that in case I put a little too much, I can always go back with my finger or a Q-tip and fix the situation. 
Also, I just hate when highlights look like separate lines slapped over the base paint, so I'm trying to avoid that. And highlighting the cloth and the fur trim with palette witch flesh because uh, I still want to achieve that relatively natural look. I don't want to use the uh, scar white or any sort of cold unnatural white. And my sincere apologies, I wasn't paying attention to the angle of filming, I was so focused on not screwing this up. But I grabbed a um, calligraphy pen and now I'm fixing the T with um, Abaddon Black. And this is a pigment liner also used in calligraphy, I suppose. And what I did is I just wrote Haggard on the ribbon and trust me, it was a long and tedious process and I probably took a dozen tries. Auric Armor Gold goes on as the highlight over Retributor Gold and those highlights can luckily be pretty sloppy. This is the only thing I like about metallics that I don't have to be super careful. So I watered it down so it flows easier. Deathclaw Brown is going to be a highlight for this crack brown, was it? I think. And again, I'm really doing my best not to create random, uh, not really um, fitting lines. I'm trying to make it a cohesive kind of look. Going back with Runfang Steel to give a little bit uh, more of a pop to the golden parts. It's a neat little trick to create more shine. You know, in Polish we say that something is as shiny as dog's balls, and I'm not sure who thought of that expression first, but yeah, that's how shiny I wanted it. Now mix a Karak stone with Auric gold. I'm trying to create that Goldilocks look for Turin. Still haven't quite nailed it, but Palette Witch Flesh mixed with Kislev Flesh to create highlights for his face and hands. And to highlight Wookiee's fur, I'm going to mix Ashen Grey with Pallid Witch Flesh. Seems like Pallid Witch Flesh is in everything in this model. So giving Wookiee a hard dry brush once again. I'm not sure if the light really allows you to see, but trust me, the, the dry brush was aggressive and the highlights are really visible. To create Wookiee's eyes, I used black all over them, together with the nose, his little button nose, and the claws. And grabbing palette witch flesh yet again to create corners of his eyes. And right now it looks a little stupid, but I'm definitely gonna fix his pupils. So back with Abaddon Black to create big, round, pug-like eyes, because Wookie really had just bulging, huge bulging angry eyes. He was just glaring at Turin with all the loathing he could muster. 
Now, the model came with this uh, little rock, so I'm gonna grab Ash and Gray. Apologies for not turning the video to the horizontal format I spaced out. And washing it with Null Oil. So I'm using Storm Vermin Fur and Palette Witch Flesh because it turned out that the dry, dry, Dawnstone paint uh, dried out. And there you have it. Here's the homie, fully painted, ready to battle. And I hope you guys liked it. Let me know so we know to make more of those panning videos for you. And that's that. I'm probably gonna invest in a better camera now.